Fala pessoal, eu sou o Barbudo, sejam todos muito bem-vindos ao canal E no vídeo de hoje, vamos com mais uma gameplay aí, sem comentário, desse novo jogo chamado Kona É um game de horror, né? Só que com bastante mistério Então esse aí se acomode bem na cadeira, que daqui pra frente eu vou calar a minha boca pra vocês desfrutarem melhor do game E ter uma melhor imersão também Então é isso aí, vamos lá E não esqueça de deixar a sua avaliação no final do vídeo Bear sought information for a living. That is to say that ever since he returned from Korea, after having served with the armed forces, he had been working as a private investigator in Montreal. William Hamilton, a rich industrialist, had gotten in touch with him regarding a simple vandalism issue. Nothing to write home about. Not worth hiring a private eye either, just so he can drive for hours on rough roads. But that's how it had always been. The client pays, Carl gets it done. They had set up to meet at the general store, his client's business. Well, actually the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them off. But it was also customary to ignore those signs entirely and drive there anyway. Hamilton never mentioned a road blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise it. Still not a soul in sight. There was no point in waiting any longer. Carl had to figure this one out by himself. Hamilton, no doubt, knew who managed the barrier. Carl wanted to give him a call, but that would have been too easy, though, as sure enough, the line was acting up. Emperor Duplessis, in spite of his conservative agenda, did a good job in colonizing the rural north which helped to re-establish the region as an integral part of the province of Quebec. The blue fleur de lise could be seen fluttering in the wind here and there, taunting the red Canadian flags on the other side of the province's boundaries. Hamilton is waiting for Carl in the general store. It was time for him to get down to business. William Hamilton enjoyed a lavish country house built in the very heart of the northern forests, not too far from here. The local populace was divided when it came to the affluent man. Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones aided him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses. But the last straw was the reopening of a mine which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man himself.
Carl needed to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. had taken off. It was still best to check it out and leave nothing to chance. Carl needed help. Complaining was not in Carl's nature. It would take more than light injuries to interrupt his investigation. This deep in the country, his last hope was to find an abandoned garage or a farm by the roadside. His life depended on it. It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Even better than he had hoped, Carl Faubert had succeeded once more and was now on his way to new adventures. Spread out on a few acres of untouched forest, bellowing caribou, everlasting snow, and undefiled lakes. The Manistan region was no tourist town. It was said to have been populated for millennia by Cree people, and ever since the industrial era, by the metal mining industry. that the general store was close by.
A milkman had to drive by every week to fill the bottles. The fresh milk indicated a recent visit. A milkman had to drive by every week to fill the bottles. The fresh milk indicated a recent visit. Something fell to the bottom of the box. Carl had no trouble recognizing his employer. He had been killed. There was no need to be a detective to figure that out. But only a detective could have noticed that the killer had to have been very close, that the fatal blow had been given before the victim even realized. What could be inside that envelope? Carl was taken aback. He knew this address. It was said to be the address of the P.O. box for the Canadian Secret Service. Carl felt a chill down his spine and had a terrifying realization. If Hamilton was dead, then who was going to pay him? An explosion suddenly occurred outside. Maintaining his composure, Carl recalled something from his military training. Wolves always stay away from populated areas. Wait, was it about bears? Carl was used to strange phenomena, but a chunk of ice like this? As if an iceberg came out of the ground? That was a first.
According to that log, it seemed like the whole village owed some money to the general store. Carl was far more interested in the bunch of nearby addresses he had just gotten his hands on, though. Carl knew that Gilles Lachance was in charge of the general store. That made him one of Hamilton's employees. A very angry employee, as Carl could plainly see. The snowstorm pummeled everything in its path. Carl was not surprised when he heard no tone. Crowbar was stuck under the lift. Notwithstanding Carl's imposing stature, car lifting wasn't part of his skill set yet. The crowbar was stuck under the lift. Notwithstanding Carl's imposing stature, car lifting wasn't part of his skill set yet. Carl felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets. And he didn't like to miss out.
were diligent in his work, always carried his log on him, in which he scribbled down thoughts and leads alike during the course of his investigations. It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Someone had been playing with a crossbow here. A very dangerous game. A bolt could hit someone's tire, or their eye. It could even kill someone if the aim was right. Without a single window to brighten things up, the inside of the cabin was almost pitch black. Beware of close encounters of knee and furniture. Solitaire, a card game only hermits can truly enjoy. Carl felt depressed at the thought of playing this. Everything was set up for a well-deserved snack. It seemed like the place hadn't been empty for long, but without knowing exactly why, Carl had the feeling no one was coming back anytime soon. <laughs> 